Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening where you are in the world. Lovely to see so many people of you just arriving in. And there's one or two I know, so hello Stephen, long time no speak. Uh, waiting for the, and everybody's just trotting in now. So we won't get started immediately, but there's a lot of people. Ah, oh, Ting Yang, you're on our one this morning. And Victoria, great to see a member of our Progress to Partner membership site with us. And, and Daniela, lovely to see you with us as well. I'm just picking out one of my our lovely members of the Progress to Partner membership site. That's brilliant. Right, I think we've got enough people now that we can get started. And I'm really pleased today to be running this webinar with a real expert in his field. Uh, Scott Kieser is the author of uh, Rhetorica. He's also the author of Winner Takes All. Now, I first met Scott trying to think where I first met you but I, I bought your book first and then yeah. I think I started chatting to you through social media and you've always yeah. been someone that I would consider really knows their stuff and and actually as you've been have you been telling me recently you you used to do a huge amount of work with firms around you actually used to help them double their tender win rate and you're doing more and more of that at the moment again yeah. and so now's a good time well, actually, now's a good time to re-talk to you. And actually, one of the things you did for a big four accountancy firm was actually double their tender win rate. And you do two things at the moment. You write documents that make people take action. And, but also, you're, one of the things you do is you are spending increasingly more and more of your time with clients on their bids, their tenders, not just how to write them, but how to run them and how to win them. And actually, rather impressively, for a decade, you trained staff at The Economist in writing skills. And at this point, I'm like, did I write the polls right? So before, <laughs> we, get, before we get started, I'd love to know, I'm just going to launch a poll. What's your role? Because um, the first one of the things that Scott is going to tell you is it is about being really specific about who you're trying to pitch for. So we want to know who you are. So Scott can be really specific in the advice that he gives. Great to see so many more people just arriving. Vanetta, oh, it's lovely to have you with us, Vanetta. Big shout out, one of my favorites. And Matt, another one of my favorites. Lovely to have you with us. And Gemma, oh, all these people that I know really well. Um, let's just see if we'll get a few more votes. It's not a hard one. <laughs> I was going to see if we get a three more. I think I'm going to have to give a time down, Scott. Three, two, one. Let's end the poll. And um, let's share the results. So Scott, you are talking to fee earners. Mm -hmm. You're talking to right. the people that get either mm -hmm. win the right to tender or get yeah. told you've got to leave this bid or tender. So we've got a right. lovely mix, an equal mix between accountant, consultant and lawyer, which is lovely. Mm -hmm. um, right. so let's just quickly in the chat box, everyone, let me know where you are in the world and what time it is, because I promise Scott, that he's going to have a truly global audience. And I just want to prove that that's going to be right. Uh, so I'd love to know, where are you in the, in the chat box? Where are you in the world and what time it is? Just into the chat box. Where are you in the world, what time it is? And we've got Vanessa, I know, in the UK at half 12. Because normally, Scott, uh, well, we've got Stephen in Newmarket. Mm -hmm. We've got Michael in Essex. We've got Vanita, another one of my favorites at home. In the UK, we've got Joanne at home. We've got Alexander from Russia. We've got Ashley from Amsterdam. Okay. I know we've got Daniela from Romania. We've got Victoria from the UK, Adam from the UK. We've got Eugene from Germany. Uh, we've got Bruce from the exotic Northamptonshire. So <laughs> as you can see, you've got Daniela, thank you for putting it up. I know it's half past two in Romania, but doing quite a bit of work with Romania over the last year, so I know the time mm. difference. Uh, usually in Germany. So we've got very much a EU UK audience there at the moment. Right. I, I did promise you, didn't I, that it would be mm, full on international. Yeah. You're and as good as you, your word, Heather. <laughs> yes, I think you probably doubted me at the time. And you're like, no, 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 everybody says <laughs> no, that. No. Um, <laughs> so this would really help Scott again with, with what he's going to be talking about, how he's going to be talking about it. You know, what, what is the size of your firm? You know, are you that very big, large international firm? Are you the mid-tier? Are you boutique? Are you a strong regional firm? How would your firm consider itself? Hmm. And this, this really helps Scott with what he's talking hmm. about and, and how he's talking. 
I think everybody's thinking, am I a boutique, a mid-tier or a strong mm-hmm. regional firm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if you're a big four, of course, you're a very large international firm. Mm. If you're Silver Circle, maybe you're a mid-tier. Uh, we've got, but I know with a lot of the lawyers here that they are, they've got a lot of an international presence, but they're probably only a very large, mostly national firm. So um, mm. just give it a few more seconds. Come mm-hmm. on, everybody. This is not a hard one. Three, two. I'm going to get that last vote in. Come on, just press the button. You know you want to. Too. Brilliant. I've managed to squeeze one more out of the bag. Let's end the poll. Let's just share the results. So unsurprisingly, considering we're talking about bids and tenders, we've got over half, Scott, from very large mm-hmm. international firms. Yeah. But we do have, you know, we've got mid-tier, mm-hmm. just under 20%, boutique, yeah. strong regional firms. Brilliant. So one more poll, everyone. And then I'm going to hand over to Scott and hand it over. And this is just the last thing, because one of the things that Scott's going to really tell you about is you've got to really understand your role, what you're there to do, but also what is particular about your who you're tendering to, which is why mm-hmm. Scott's spending the time up front just to make sure, because he's never spoken to my lovely audience before, mm-hmm. but he really wants to know, you know, what is what what do you actually do? Are you the one leading the bid? Are you part of the bid? Or mm-hmm are actually you about to take, take part in tenders bids. You know, as we know, we don't think we have anybody from the bid management team. Let's go and see. Um, right, three, two, one, let's end the poll. Let's share the results. So actually out of you, we've got 45% lead it as the main fee earner. 32% take part in it and 23% about first take the steps in there. That's mm. brilliant. So that gives you a real view. Mm. And into the chat box, one more thing. What do you want? What do you really want answered by Scott today? He is a true expert. And at this point, unless Scott asks me a question, I'm going to shut up after this. But actually, in the chat box, what's the one thing? You know, mm. you're giving up an hour of your time. What do you really want from today? What is it, that nugget into the chat box, please? This is this moment, Scott, where we just have to sit there and wait. Mm. <laughs> Don't really type really and think. Mm. It's brilliant. So Adam wants to know how to differentiate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I know we're definitely going into that. Yeah. Uh, Vanessa wants to know how to, uh, Vanessa is a lawyer, uh, M&A lawyer, wants to know how to stand mm-hmm. out amongst a crowded group of bidders. Mm. Absolutely. We've got something yeah. in the Q&A box. Um, Isaac wants to know, how can I add value internally as a mid-level associate just starting to take part in pitches? This mm-hmm. is what I talked to you about. These people that are yeah. there, where the, it, it, it's the partner being the head honcho and they want to add value, but they're just being pulled along into the pitch. Mm-hmm. Benji said mm-hmm. something else very similar. <laughs> how to make a great impact where the conversation yeah. is being led by the partner and the contact who seem to know each other or mm-hmm. mutual contacts without being feeling like the mutual spare wheel. Yeah. No, I, I love that phrase, the mute, the mute spare wheel. That's brilliant. Wheel. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, Eugene who talked about um, how to stand out amongst competition in a commodity marketplace without compromising on fees. So that's particularly the whole audit marketplace. Um, we've got two that are very linked. Matt wants to know how to deal with pressure on pricing, particularly mm-hmm. in a COVID-19 environment. Matt is a, yeah. a commercial lawyer. Okay. Um, Liam wants to know how to respond when the tender is unsuccessful. Mm. Uh, Vanita is looking for some tips. So Vanita, a big four partner, is looking for some tips on winning new clients in this COVID world. You know, tips Mm. that will make a better impact. Uh, Mm. Stephen wants to know, and I know Stephen will, price will come into some of that, how to sway the decision where the price is top consideration. Right, Scott, it's over to you now. You've got a mandate. and And I know that Scott, I can't wait, and I'm going to go on to put, I'm going to go on to mute and just leave it all to you, Scott. Let me know well, if you need what, anything. What a mandate! That's brilliant. Thank you, Heather. Um, let me just go back to the original. So we, we've we've got a really interesting. Um, well, first of all, hello everybody, and, and I hope you're all keeping well in um, in these rather kind of strange and unnerving times. Um, so what are we going to look at? I mean, it, it was absolutely brilliant to to get a sense of what are the what are the the burning issues that you're facing when you're bidding competing for business 
Um, uh, a lot of them were centered around differentiation and being distinctive and standing out. Um, and that for me is, is one of the, the major issues. And I'm gonna, you know, if I haven't addressed that really fully by, by the, end of, uh, the end of this session, then I, I won't have done my job. Uh, but there are other things that I'm gonna share with you that I hope, I hope will help you win more, win more business. Um, so what I'm gonna to cover today, I'm, I'm going to just to sort of set a kind of baseline. I'm gonna run through a typical bidding process uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. And I'm gonna choose um, a standard public sector bidding process because as you'll appreciate, the public sector procurement process is the most onerous. And basically, if you can get your heads around public sector procurement, uh, then when it comes to for to voluntary or particularly private sector procurement uh, it should be it should be much easier um, i'm going to share with you um, and this is based on 30 years experience of working in, in bids and tenders um, i'm going to share with you where i think most or many professional services bids go wrong uh, and i use an, an analogy with a, a mountain or a mountain range Third thing I'm going to sh share with you the seven ingredients of Scott's secret sauce, uh, which is sort of in a way my take on proposals best practice. And then at the end, I'm going to, uh, to, to try and make sure that we've answered as many of your questions as possible. So, typical public sector procurement. And forgive me if you're familiar with this, as I say, I just want to sort of um, make sure we're all on the same, the same page. Um, the buyer, we start off with the buyer, whoever that may be, and whatever organisation that may be, identifying a need. And I want to be really clear about this. It's a very innocuous word, need, but it's actually the source of any need or requirement or objective or goal is actually pain. So in nine times out of ten, uh, a buyer or a client or in public sector parlance, a contracting authority will be facing a, a pain or a set of pain points or a challenge. And that will be driving their need. And as a result of that, you know, what they're doing behind closed doors is they will draft the, the bid spec. Uh, they will specify and really nail and articulate internally what, what they need and what's a contract uh, will will remove that pain and they'll draw up typically the terms of reference of the bid. Uh, they'll also again obviously internally appoint an evaluation panel uh, which typically ranges from between three to five people. Uh, they'll then notify, they'll sort of if you like send a warning shot across the market's bows and they'll notify, they'll, they'll give the market prior warning uh, that they're going to be inviting the market to tender. And in public sector procurement um, uh, forum, that takes the form of a PIN, which is a prior indicative notice. So it's basically just warning the market that their, a tender is going to be coming out in the next three months, typically. Uh, they'll, if, the, if the value of the contract is above certain financial thresholds, uh, then they're obliged by law uh, certainly UK law, to advertise those in, in OJU, uh, the official journal of the, the European Union, which opens up the, the market to all 27 countries of, of the EU. And in what's known as the restricted public sector procurement procedure, which is a, a two-step process, they will invite in expressions of interest, inviting anybody who's interested to complete a pre-selection questionnaire called the PQQ, pre-qualification questionnaire. And that covers basic things like your financial standing and stability, very, very important post-COVID, as you can imagine, uh, you know, as we, we're beginning to emerge out of lockdown. Uh, the PQQ will look at things like your capacity, uh, the size of your organization, uh, what they're doing is they're, they're using the PQQ to shortlist potentially a huge range of bidders to 
three, four, five or six bidders who are likely to be suitable. And at that point, when, they, when they've shortlisted the bidders, they will then invite that, invite that shortlisted, uh, those shortlisted bidders to complete a full tender. Um, the buyer will issue the, the RFP or ITT and they'll open a clarification window, which gives the shortlisted bidders the opportunity within a fairly restricted sort of time window to ask questions. Now, as you're probably aware, it's great to ask questions, but by law, they're bound to share their answers to those questions, to your questions, with all the other bidders. Uh, so don't be fooled into, don't be seduced into thinking that, you know, you, you've come up with brilliant questions because they may be great questions, uh, but the contracting authority, which is the buyer, is going to share their arms, your question and their answers with everybody else. So in a way that potentially sort of undermines any, any, potential, any potential advantage. You as the bidder will then submit your bid response in whatever form they've stipulated. Uh, the, the buyer will obviously go away and evaluate those responses. And if there is a, if there is a next stage, typically a, a, an interview or an oral presentation, uh, which we refer to commonly as a beauty parade, then you'll get invited to that. Um, and uh, you will perform or not, as the case may be, and then typically, obviously, they'll award the contract and notify all bidders. So that is the typical timeline for public sector procurement. Uh, and I would be surprised if, if that, uh, well, I would be surprised if you weren't familiar with that in, in, in round terms. So let's, let's move on and shrink that timeline down. The whole point about that timeline is that the moment, the moment the buyer issues the RFP or the ITT, the request for a proposal or the invitation to tender, everything changes. Everything changes because to the right of that line, you are now running, you know, the game is on. Everything to the right of that line is your response to the buyer's rules, time scales, instructions. From here on in, you're playing their game by their rules. And the analogy I use is that of a watershed. So typically a watershed is a dividing line between two adjacent river systems, whereby the water the rainwater running off the mountain or the mountain range either cascades down into one river or the other. It's fairly binary. It's either one or t'other. And this is the analogy I make with, with responding with, with, the, with, the, with the bidding process. Because essentially what you're doing is you are involved in reactive BD. Because you're responding. Everything to the right of the line is about your response. And you may respond brilliantly, but nonetheless, you're playing by somebody else's rules. And so I, I refer to that as reactive BD. And there's nothing wrong with reactive BD, as long as you have the information you need to do it brilliantly. And that's where the problem comes with many professional services firms including, I have to say, very large international firms. And I know, uh, you know, we have a number of people on the call who work for those kind of firms. Uh, you know, I've worked with three of the big four accountancy firms. Uh, I've worked with three magic circle law firms and smaller firms as well. And in fact, in a way, what unites them all is that they all make the same mistake. Uh, which I'm, I'm, I'm going to share with you now, if I can move it on. Um, and this is what I call, it's a vicious circle. It's what I call the self-fulfilling cycle of reactive bidding. And where it starts is with this. It starts with the absence or the lack of high quality rapport based conversations with the buyer pre tender. This is really, really important. This is where the rot sets in. 
I don't know why it is, and I'd be really, really interested to, to get your views on to, well, A, whether you agree with this assessment, and B, if you, would do, if you do agree with it, why it happens. But I observe a lot of professionals being very shy about picking up the phone, showing an interest in the, in the client's businesses, wanting to meet them for coffee or whatever it may be. Um, there is a real diffidence about that. And as a result of that, what that means is, is that if I was saying to my, I have a, I have a 